if you're getting into this, I'll just tell you right now, the way to go is custom. And the reason is because you have full decisions on what kind of motors, what kind of props, uh, what the application of the drone is, so that you're getting the best performance for what you're trying to build it for. Things are changing now, you guys have it good, but back in the day, it was horrible. It was really intimidating. Like, ha having to solder and take all these wires and link them to another pad. <laughs> there have definitely been people that wash out of this hobby due to pure frustration. You know, they spend eight hours on their first build, go out, crash immediately, and it's just a pile of parts, and they're like, all right, that's not for me. Because when you first start, you're not gonna have control of it. You're not gonna understand what went wrong. And you're like, I don't know, I just lost video. This is, this is dumb. Oftentimes it's incredibly frustrating because there's just always so many things that go wrong. Like you're out of the exact wire you need or you can't find the screw that you need or the video transmitter that you've got won't fit on your frame even though you thought it would. Or you're trying to get in beta flight and it doesn't matter that you've watched every Bardwell video that's ever been made about this, you still can't figure out why you can't change your video channel. Whether you're doing Google or hopping on YouTube to find one of Bardwell's videos, you have lots of tutorials on how to build your drones with Joshua Bardwell and you know so many helpful guys in the industry. I learned so much from Joshua as well. Yeah, and with YouTube, you know, you have so many people that are willing to share their, their knowledge of how to build, how to repair drones. That... It kind of just becomes part of being an FPV pilot is having a workbench in your house somewhere with a soldering iron and tools and wire scraps everywhere. And just like being able to tinker with things, if you like that, then this is definitely the hobby for you. If you like doing the fiddling, because there's a lot of guys that love building, if you like doing that, great. But <laughs> um, I think that's not really my dream, personally. I do find it very important to learn how to build because um, it helps me understand how the drone works. My goal is always to get people to their first flight as soon as possible so that you can actually start enjoying it, getting some payoff. So doing a full build tutorial gives me an opportunity to take somebody from the very beginning to their very first flight and put all the information they need in one place where they can sort of follow it from start to finish. Hey everyone, welcome to this video full build tutorial today with Joshua Bardwell on the Apex 5 inch HD frame. So here I have all the components for the drone today. I did, however, crack open uh, one of the bags just to be able to measure and design these 3D prints. So we have two 3D prints, uh, one to mount the GoPro and one to mount the antennas on the tail of the drone. I designed them in a software program called Fusion 360 by Autodesk, and I would highly recommend it to any hobbyist looking to make custom parts. One of the cool things about FPV is the fact that you can build everything custom to exactly what you want. So if you want to fly freestyle and you want to carry a GoPro camera, you can buy freestyle equipment and freestyle frames and build it the exact way you want it to carry the GoPro, carry the battery, exactly where you want it to fly. So you need to have the modularity and the ability to bring various components together and get them to work together. That's like part of this hobby. So let's go over the parts that are gonna go into this build. We're gonna start with the frame. It doesn't look that impressive sitting here in a plastic bag, but uh, when we get it put together, it's gonna look pretty awesome. The, let's say the motors. The motors are hype train blaster motors uh, made by uh, Rotor Riot, where they spin around and they make the quadcopter fly. You gotta put propellers on the motors if you wanna fly. These are Ethics S4 props in uh, lemon lime flavor. This is the T-Motor F7 flight controller. The flight controller is basically the brains of the quad, it's just a little computer that runs a program that makes the quadcopter fly. And this right here is the ESC, electronic speed controller. And basically the motors don't spin without the ESC to drive them. This is the DJI Air Unit. It is a camera and a wireless radio, basically. It's a DJI video link. Similar to the video link that you might see if you've got like a Phantom or a Mavic or something like that, but much higher performance, much lower latency for quadcopter pilots who are racing at really high speeds. That's gonna go to these goggles, the DJI video goggles, and let you see where your quadcopter is flying. This is the FreeSky Tyrannus QX7, and 
Anybody who's ever played video games should understand how this thing works. We're gonna move the sticks and tell the quadcopter what to do. We've also got a bunch of little switches that we can flip to arm, disarm the quad. And this is gonna send uh, control signals to the quadcopter uh, via its wireless antenna. And those are gonna be picked up by this, which although it's very, very small, might be one of the most important parts. This is the receiver which receives the control signals and uh, outputs them to the flight controller. So this receiver is a TBS Crossfire, Team Black Sheet makes it. So five inch quads are like your usual, like go-to go -to size in the freestyle world right now. So, I mean, there's tons of parts, tons of different components that can actually be available to purchase. The technology has matured around five inch propeller drones. Like you don't have to do a whole lot of work with the tune. It's not the best long range platform, but it is the best at carrying a GoPro. And what you can do is you can just squeeze the arms a little bit to help hold the screws in place so they don't fall out when you flip it over. So now the motors are all installed and we are starting to get something that kind of looks like a quadcopter, but we got to do the electronics. And that means we're gonna get to the part where we're gonna start soldering. And that means it's where everyone's gonna fall on their face. Cause a lot of people don't know how to solder. Now the capacitor we're using is called an electrolytic capacitor and it is polarized and what that means is that there is a negative leg and a positive leg and if you get those backwards it will go off like a little tiny remember those little poppers that you used to have when you were a kid that pop and plug into the back of the air unit and that's going to come up here and it will plug into the flight controller so no soldering there that's one of the advantages of building a dji build what i'm trying to get is the solder to kind of, see how I haven't really, I haven't really, it's not taking up the whole of the pad. I really want the solder to take up the whole of the pad. The whole pad should get hot and the solder should flow to the edge of the pad. That's a mistake. Here we go. Put the wrong wire in the wrong place. Some of these wires are gonna carry power to the receiver uh, from the five volt regulator on the flight controller. Some of them are gonna carry the data. So you really need patience, you need determination, you need to want to succeed, because all these things will come into your first week of getting in the FPV. But at some point you might need someone to actually sit down with you and be like, no, do this that way and this that way. Otherwise you get discouraged really fast. I need a camera like The Office to just make reaction shots too. I would say an FPV pilot needs to have perseverance and a good sense of humor because you're gonna crash, your drone's gonna get stuck at the top of a tree, it's gonna go in the water. So people ask, when do you get to a point where you can just fly and not like be constantly crashing your quadcopter and then fixing it and then crashing it and then fixing it? Where do you get to the point where you just get to enjoy the hobby? And I'm sorry to tell you that never happens. We're gonna now proceed to configuring the software and doing the final setup. And then we'll put the top plate on and we'll finish actually sort of button, like take care of these loose wires and everything. What we got. It's a good sign. We've got a normal startup beep. Let's go next to the receiver tab and let's see if there's any movement in the receiver tab. We know that we got binding here, but then is the flight controller hearing the signal from the receiver? And if I move the sticks, I can see that I do see movement. I love that you put the uh, 30 degrees right there in the design. That's so many people overlook that. It's kind of annoying. You're just guessing. Good. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we just got to go and fly it. So, you know. So I'm excited. Thank you, Joshua. Built uh -huh. my quad. You know. That's what this, that's what this was. This was just a trick to get me to build a quad for him. Being able to see this much definition really makes a difference. Hey, I'll come in for a little land. Kind of to crash your quad on like five minutes into the first flight. Flies nice. Flies really nice. 
once you experience it, and it's like, oh yes, it's so good, and then you crash, and now you have to go back and fix your quad for an hour. But you got you got a taste. Before you go, if you're interested in watching the entire Flow State film from start to finish with no ads and in much better image quality than YouTube gives you, not all 1080p's are made equal. Some 1080p's are higher bitrate and better image quality than others. If you want all that, there's two options. Number one, you can buy the film on Vimeo. There's a link in the video description below to where you can pick that up. Or if you're one of those people who still collects and watches physical media, I know you're out there. We sell it on Blu-ray. And again, there's a link in the video description below as well. On the other hand, if you want to keep watching on YouTube, all the videos are in a playlist, including the outtakes and director's cut stuff, the stuff that didn't make the final edit. Uh, and I'll put cards on screen and links in the video description to those. See you there.